Every now and then I come across a product offering something so outlandish, it's hard to believe it's true. So imagine my reaction when I learned about Terabox, a cloud storage service offering one terabyte one terabyte of free storage space and two terabytes at a fraction of the cost of its competitors. I thought to myself, there must be a catch. So I decided to dig deep into the service and I'm sharing what I uncovered in this Terabox review. And let me tell you, there are definitely, definitely some big fat asterisks attached to that one terabyte of free storage. So stick around to see what I found. So Terabox is a relatively new kid on the block. It launched in 2020 as Dubox and was largely under Chinese ownership. For anyone unaware, Chinese companies tend to be heavily regulated by the government and often have to succumb to demands to hand over user data or censor information deemed sensitive. I figured this made sense. Lots of free storage pulls in lots of users, which means plenty of data for companies and authorities to access. And well, it turns out the company was actually taken over by Japanese investors and its headquarters are now in Tokyo, Japan, a country with a much better track record on data privacy. I still wasn't fully convinced. So I decided to dig deep into the privacy policy and I'm gonna get into what I found shortly. And it's quite shocking actually. And let's take a look what Terabox offers beyond its headline grabbing storage capacity. But first, coffee. Speaking of coffee, I'm basically fueled by it daily. And after struggling to find consistently great beans, my partner and I founded Coffeeness to create the perfect chocolatey espresso blend. We've tested this blend in over 100 machines to make it perfect. Take a look at our overflowing storage rooms right here with all the machines. From high-end manual espresso machines, like this beauty here, to Breville or Sage semi-automatics, or maybe you're the super automatic guy and you prefer a Dura machine, like this one here, or the budget models from DeLonghi that works also perfectly with our espresso. It delivers exceptional results every single time. Wonderful. We personally visit our partner farms in Brazil every year, sourcing 100% Arabica beans through direct trade relationships. And each small batch is freshly roasted in Brooklyn, resulting in a medium strength espresso with delightful chocolate and hazelnut notes. Our customers love it too, with hundreds of five-star reviews on our website and Trustpilot. One reviewer wrote, great beans for my super auto with smooth crema as in a coffee bar in Italy. Lovely to hear that. Use the coupon code CLOUDWORDS for 5% off your first order and European viewers visit our EU store for beans roasted in Frankfurt and US viewers head to coffiness.com for Brooklyn roasted beans. All the links are in the description box below. And now, Back to today's video. Terabox does most of what you would expect from a cloud storage service. You can upload photos, videos, documents, and obviously music files. And it is a really well-designed built-in media player as well, which you can use to watch your videos and listen to your music. And I'd argue it's almost <laughs> on par with a pCloud media player. Terabox lets me change the speed of my videos and also the playback quality, which by the way, brings us to the first catch of using the free version. On a free account, you can only play videos at a maximum quality of 480p. The size of the files you can upload is also capped at four gigabytes. And if you're happy to watch content at lower quality, this shouldn't be a big problem for you. However, <laughs> if you're planning on using all that free storage to back up 4K movies. Or if you're a content creator like myself, recording your videos in 4K, you're gonna run into a wall or you will need to bump up to the paid account, which ups the file size limit to 128 gigabytes and offers 4K video playback. Now, 128 gigabytes is plenty in terms of file size restriction. 
unless you're recording your footage in, I don't know, 8K RAW, that is. But also, if you're not a content creator, it's pretty rare to have files that are really larger than 128 gigs. You can add automatic subtitles to your videos too. And Terabox uses AI for this and supports 12 languages, including Mandarin and Hindi. You're limited to subtitles for three videos on the free plan, but the paid option is unlimited. And that's pretty cool because services usually charge extra for this. If they build in a search feature based on the captions, that would be really dope. And I'd immediately whip out my credit card and like shut up and take my money. The music player is nice and simple to use. I can listen to my favorite tracks via the mobile app or the web app and I'd like to see the option to create playlists and shuffle my tracks as well. Maybe then I could cut ties with Spotify and, and stop paying those monthly fees. The documents tab is where I can quickly access all my, well, you guessed it, documents. Hmm. Look, there is not much you can do beyond viewing your files. There is no built-in editor. You can't really create a document inside of Terabox. All you can really do is, is backup, view, share, and download your file. So it's not a productivity suite by any means. And I can't recommend Terabox if really that's what you're looking for or if you have a bigger team that you want to use it with. If you're looking for a more collaborative cloud storage solution, I recommend looking at Google Workspace or Microsoft 365. They both have cloud apps for collaboration, productivity, and communication, and really help bring teams together. And I must be honest, I mean, CloudWords is fueled by Google Docs and Drive, and we use it constantly with our remote team, and I personally couldn't live without it. We can't talk about Terabox without talking about user experience. And there's one key difference between the free and the pay versions. The free plan is laced, literally laced with banner ads. When you open the mobile app or log into the, into the web version, you're gonna see a pop-up ad that you can't immediately bypass. The types of ads vary from gaming apps to dating apps and even Terabox in-house ads trying to get you basically to get to the paid plan. And really I can't blame them because I mean, they gotta make money if they offer so much free storage. These ads, can be annoying when you just want to quickly access a file and I'm pretty sure you're going to get frustrated sooner or later. One workaround for the web app is to use an ad blocker extension or something like a Brave browser which gets rid of ads without the need to upgrade to a paid account. The in-app ads on mobile though are impossible to get rid of as far as I can tell. I, I couldn't get rid of them. Maybe you found a solution so let me know in the comments. Setting annoying ads aside, the general user experience is good with Terabox. I like how I can access my videos and photos and documents in separate tabs. I can also switch up my viewing experience by looking at my files as icons, thumbnails, or standard list view, just as you're used to from your operating system. So it's a very seamless transition. I did notice there were no file previews for PDFs and documents, but I did have them for photos and videos. By the way, Terabox doesn't have a desktop app, only web and mobile versions. There used to be a desktop app back in 2022, but it's been for some reason discontinued. So if you're looking to interact with your files locally, then you'll need to find another option. I'll leave some links to articles covering the best cloud storage for Macintosh and Windows down in the description box below. But seriously, a cloud storage service in 2025, right? that we're reviewing here on CloudWords that does not have a desktop application, it's gonna be pretty hard to get into the top five rankings, to be honest. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit. File management is, is pretty, it's pretty run of the mill, if I'm honest. You can upload single files or full folders and create folders and obviously subfolders within the platform. There is a standard search functionality. It lets you do the basics like search files by name, but it lacks advanced searches like you'll find, for example, in Google Drive. Things like searching the contents within a file isn't possible with Terabox. And I mentioned before, it would be so easy for videos to just activate the search feature for the caption that Terabox generates anyway. So you could have basically a full media management within Terabox if they just enabled that feature. But without it, it's pretty useless. When running speed tests for Terabox's free and paid plans, our team got two very, well, contrasting results. One was like, the fun and energetic kid at the party, you know, playing with everybody, getting along with everyone. Well, and the other, was more like the grandparent 
to need to go home <sighs> early and take a nap, basically. <laughs> so we uploaded a five gigabit folder with a mix of file types, including photos and video. The team ran the tests on a one gigabit per second internet connection, which we first throttle down to 100 megabits per second for consistency. And before we run a full throttle test to see how much basically faster the, this we can squeeze out the speed test. So we have definitely different section of speed tests here at CloudWords, and we constantly test and update our speed test results. If you're interested in that, click on the description box below that takes you to our full speed test result of all the cloud storage services that we've done in the past, I don't know, 10 years or so. The free plan was, well, disastrously slow for downloads, taking over 40 minutes, it's four zero. And honestly, one of the slowest I've seen in any cloud storage service. Uploads were not so bad, but not really quick either, coming in at just shy of nine minutes. Interestingly, upload speeds improved further to just under five minutes in our full throttle test, but download speeds stayed pretty similar. Well, in contrast, the paid plan was one of the quickest I've seen. Uploads took just slightly over seven minutes and download just short of seven and a half minutes. In the one gigabit test, the upload took a bit more than three and a half minutes with the download clocking in at just under five minutes. Well, it's not the fastest no throttle tests we've done. The upload speed outperforms most other services, including big names like Dropbox, for example. Speaking of speed tests, our 2025 cloud storage performance report is coming out soon. So make sure to subscribe down below to our newsletter to be notified when it drops. I'll drop a link in the description so you can sign up and we'll also share more interesting news about cloud storage in general and very interesting tips around cloud storage productivity, how you can use it, and basically which are the best providers for your specific needs. Coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna cover file sharing. You see, it's here where I really have to give props to Terabox. Its free version has some advanced security features many platforms reserve for their paid plans. And for example, I can password protect the files I share. This is a super important feature in 2025. You don't want anybody with a link to access your files. So Terabox suggests a password or I can basically create my own custom password. I can also tweak how long people can access a shared file or folder and I can make it permanent or switch up access for only a few days, weeks or months. I can also send files directly to someone's inbox and add up to five separate email accounts at once, which is great if I want to send something to the video team, for example. The limitation of link duration or link um, sharing essentially is also, also crucial if you're working with um, one-off projects with um, clients or if you work with other freelancers, you can just basically finish a project, the link expires, but your data is still safe without anybody being able to access it. Terabox lacks other granular permissions. I like to see essentially from cloud store services, things like allow others to add files to a folder. Terabox doesn't offer that, nor can I give them editing privileges. These are really basic features and it leaves me really, I mean, scratching my head as to why Terabox would admit it. It's 2025 and cloud storage is here to collaborate. I mean, why else would you offer a cloud storage service? Don't get me started. <laughs> On the topic of security, I'm gonna cover Terabox's security and privacy features. Like I said before, I noticed really some shocking things here. Let me start with the basics. Terabox has a personal vault, which you can only access with two-factor authentication. It's only available on the mobile app and free users can only add up to 200 megabytes, megabytes worth of files. Paid users can add the two terabytes of storage they are essentially allocated. You can access the vault either via a password or using Face ID and it will automatically lock itself after one minute or so of inactivity. Terabox uses TLS SSL encryption to protect your files when you send them to its servers, but it's not clear what encryption method is used once they've arrived. Our team reached out like I think three times to get some clarity and either didn't receive a response or this response didn't really answer a question. And this is an enormous red flag that makes me question if my files are encrypted 
at all when they're on Terabox's servers. Privacy-wise, there is no client-side encryption, and there are some red flags in the terms of service that implies Terabox does some kind of um, file scanning, at least for shared files. I know this because before you share a file, you get this message. Well, look at that. <laughs> now, it doesn't definitely prove that Terabox scans user files, but it certainly gives that impression. The privacy policy is an absolute eyesore, by the way. I mean, it's like 5,000 words in length and uses like super, super tiny small font. Put it side by side with sync.com's privacy policy and it'll become clear to you which service wants to be open and transparent and which one really doesn't. Now, magnifying glass in hand, <laughs> I read Terabox's full policy, and one thing really stood out to me. It states that Terabox will share your personal data if it deems it necessary to publish news, carry out supervision by public opinion, and so on in the public interest. Honestly, what is that? Sure, I mean, they're gonna share my photos of my mom's birthday party for public opinion, but either way, I don't want a private company determining what's in the interest of public scrutiny. For me, this is enough to say, you know what? I don't need this free and super cheap storage that badly. Guys, it's also time to talk about money. Terabox keeps things real simple when it comes to the plans available. You have one free account and one paid option. Its pricing structure is a little odd, but I will admit it's it's really cheap. You can get the two terabytes plan for as little as three and a half dollars a month if you set up an automated payment, but if you just pay for one month and set it to recurring, it's five bucks. You can choose an annual payment, which drives the monthly cost right down. And beyond the core plan, Terabox lets you purchase additional storage in packages of one, three, and five terabytes. And these cost 20, 50, and a hundred bucks respectively per year, but there's no options for shorter term billing. What more can I say? Terabox is amongst the cheapest out there. And if cheap is what you're after, above all else, it's really hard to recommend another service. Ah, Terabox. What to make of you? You see, I'm conflicted. On one hand, I'm always gonna praise a service that has a generous free account and affordable prices for paid plans. But on the other hand, a sketchy approach to privacy and an app full of ads makes me want to run far, 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 far away. And honestly, I cannot stress this enough. Those ads are annoying and totally ruin your user experience. I'll say this much. If you're on a budget and just want to back up as many files as you can for free, sure, sure, go, go with Terabox. What it offers works well, and although it lacks some key features for collaboration, it has all that most people will probably need. But personally speaking, if you ask me, it's a hard no for me, and privacy buffs should likely follow suit. But, as always, I want to know what you think. Is all that free storage worth it for a loss of privacy and poor user experience? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> and if you like this video, please hit the like and don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell icon so YouTube notifies you when my next video goes live. There's literally no other way to know for sure when we publish if you don't activate the bell. So thank you very much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.